and welcome to Heathen Hearth. This is the show where we explore recipes inspired by the historic and ethnographic imagination. This week, we're making Dokla Panakea in the French style. Now, if that confuses you or inspires you, you have to watch this video. This week's recipe is a fusion between three different cuisines. And the cuisines that they're a fusion of is uh, Northern Indian, specifically Gujarati. Then there is Danish cuisine of, uh, from uh, Southern Scandinavia. And then, of course, uh, we have uh, classic French cooking methods thrown in there as well. So what I've done is I've taken dishes from these three different places that have elements of them that are similar and combined them into one for the Instant Pot. First, we go to Gujarat, which is in Northern India. And for this dish, uh, it was actually the main inspiration for this, um, uh, for this recipe. And I really have to give thanks to the YouTube channel Instant Potting with Poonam because they're the ones who inspired me to create this dish. The dish is called Dokla. And Dokla is um, basically a steamed fermented pancake. Oftentimes it uses a, a pulse or a legume such as um, chickpeas or another lentil and sometimes it uses rice. And in that way, it is like an idli or a dosa. However, modern day people don't usually ferment it. That's sort of the older style way of doing it. Usually they use chemical leavening agents. But doklas are always supposed to be fluffy. Now I've never had a dokla, but uh, I'm gonna try to make something that's a bit like it because I love besan, which is chickpea flour, and it's really high in protein. And when you combine it with what I'm going to combine it with, with the other cuisines, it makes a Nordic way dish that is uh, very high in protein and uh, lower in carbohydrates, but it should taste delicious. The second place we go to, of course, is Denmark. And I've done Danish recipes on this channel before. My mother's from Denmark and it's a familiar cuisine to me. And the type of pancakes I like are the Danish style pancakes. They're a lot like um, a crepe or in the, um, in the Balkans, a uh, palachinka, that type, of that type of really eggy type of crepe. Now, the Danes, and also to the Swedes, oftentimes add a little bit of cardamom spice to their, um, to their pancakes. And, of course, cardamom is a spice that's commonly used in Indian cooking as well. So, I saw there was this overlap, but it has eggs. Now, the thing that's similar about panakea and, um, and dokla is that they both use dairy products quite often. The dokla uses a yogurt for a souring agent, and now that sour taste, um, I think it probably replaces the sourness of the fermented grains and legumes in the modern recipes, but it also provides an acid that helps the chemical leaveners work. Danish uh, pancakes are not leavened, but they do include milk. So uh, I'm going to be using um, Icelandic skir, which is a whey that is essentially fermented in a yogurt type process, but it is just basically pure protein. Now, because I'm adding eggs and this heavy type of, uh, of fermented milk product, I went to French cuisine to help rise the, um, uh, rise the bread or pancake a little bit more. And the French uh, use a technique obviously of separating the egg yolks and the egg whites quite often and whipping up the egg whites to get air into it in order to get uh, fluffiness into dishes like souffles and things like that. So my concept is, which I, I don't know how it's gonna turn out, this is not quite live, but I've never tested this recipe before, is to combine the three. So I'll be having the, uh, the, the a fluffy dokla with savory taste, but with a lot of eggs and the heavier types of protein. And then, uh, but uh, to balance that out, I'm gonna not only use a little bit of baking powder, but I'm also going to use the, the French method uh, that is often used for souffle. So I'm gonna test this out. Uh, I hope it works. Stay tuned. I'm gonna need about uh, an inch of ginger for this. Uh, I, uh, a lot of people don't peel it, but I'm gonna peel it. And I'm gonna finally mince this. This is uh, an optional ingredient, a lot of dokla, but I love fresh ginger. And since my daughter Kadri is not eating this, I don't have to worry about ginger allergies. So I'm making it with ginger. Uh, I also have a jalapeno pepper here. It's not a common pepper in India, but it's what I had and I like it. They're a bit more mild. So the thing about ginger is always remember to slice it across the, um, across the grain. That way it won't come out tough. You notice how it has these larger hairs on it. 
That way, if I when I mince it, it uh, it'll be in smaller pieces. There is a Chinese way of cutting of cutting ginger, and you smash it with your knife uh, to break it up first. But I don't uh, I don't need need that here. I want to have little little bits. Now for the jalapeno, I think I'm going to keep the seeds because these are not very um, very spicy jalapenos and I would like to have a little bit of spice in my final dish. So as you can see, I've uh, separated the egg yolks and the egg whites. And uh, these uh, eggs are from pasture raised free range chickens. There seems to now be a competition amongst producers to market the happiest chicken eggs around. And I think that's, uh, that's a good thing because the uh, chicken and egg industry is just terrible. So I'm willing to spend twice as much for eggs if they're from happier chickens. So that's what, uh, that's what these are from. So the first thing we're going to do is take the egg yolks and whip them up into peaks. Next, we're going to mix our other wet ingredients here. We're going to start with the egg yolks. Start with the egg yolks here. Make sure we get all of them. That's flavor. And the skier. I'll just mix that together a little bit first. Incorporate it before we get uh, get whipping it. I'll put a little bit of the salt in, a pinch of salt, and the spices at this point. This is the coriander and the turmeric. The turmeric is to uh, both to give it a bit of earthy background umami flavor, but also for the uh, the bold yellow color as well. I'm going to use the mixer for this. It actually smells delicious right now. <laughs> okay, this is the basan, the chickpea flour, and uh, this is super fine chickpea flour. I thought that might be better and make a more tender uh, product, so that's what I'm using. Now, I haven't measured the amount of water yet, so I have two, two cups of water out and I'm just going to mix it in until I have a uh, nice runny sort of pancake type of batter. Alright, that's a nice smooth batter. I have my vegetable ingredients here. And my baking powder. Let's fold that together. We can actually stir it fairly well so the baking powder gets incorporated. It's the next stage we have to be careful with. Oh, so we have the two mixtures, two wet mixtures here. You can see this one's actually bubbling up already with the baking powder, so we better get this in. So you have to be careful here and just do this bit by bit. What we're going to be doing is incorporating, lightly folding in the two ingredients together. OK. 
Okay. This thing is called a Dokla steamer. And so you notice it has a, a base here so that it can be above uh, the water. And then it has three separate trays. I have already greased them with ghee, which is clarified butter. And I am just going to fill them up now. All right, settle this in so it's completely flat. There we go. Okay, and then I'll get the tower back here. Put it back in. Oh, I forgot something. This is something that is optional, but pretty. You can put pepper and or chili pepper on the on the top to make it to make it look nice. So I've got uh, gochugaru here. This is uh, Korean uh, hot pepper. I just like uh, gochugaru rather than, uh, let's say, Kashmiri merch or uh, cayenne pepper, just because it, um, I find the flavor better and it, um, it actually is, uh, uh, gives it a darker red color, whatever dish you're using. It has more of the uh, antioxidants in it, I guess. So let's do, uh, let's do a little, little patterns or something, I don't know. Uh, and maybe something more random on this one here. I didn't know I put a cross, but there we go. Since they uh, look so sunny, I thought I'd have the base pattern be the uh, the sun wheel, the, uh, the four quadrant circle. Okay. All right, and then this uh, stand, you just uh, move this arm across and then it holds itself uh, like that. So now next uh, we're going to go to the Instant Pot. All right, time to put everything into the Instant Pot now. So we have um, the remainder of our water, that's 300 milliliters, that's a little bit more than a cup. They always recommend to have at least a cup in your Instant Pot. And then the tower goes in. We'll seal up our Instant Pot. Nice, I love that sound. We make sure it goes to venting mode. Then we'll hit manual. It's at high, but we only need 10 minutes on this. We'll keep it for 10 minutes and then we'll let the, let the pressure naturally release for a few minutes after that. And then uh, we'll do a final quick release and we'll have our Dokla Panakea French style. Something that's done uh, quite often in Indian cooking is uh, tempering of spices in uh, an oil before you, um, <clears throat> before you add it to a dish. Here, I'm taking a very generous amount of ghee and melting it in a small pan. And what I'm gonna be doing is uh, tempering my spices. And what that does is it, um, it releases the volatile oils from the spices, which carry most of the flavor. And it binds them with the lipids in the, um, in the oil. And in that way, it creates the maximum amount of flavor from the minimum amount of spices and, and just all of the spices uh, and taste come out. Um, in um, unfortunately, I am using uh, ghee here. Sometimes you can use oil, and you can also use bacon fat, as uh, one of my other uh, favorite YouTube channels, Headbangers Kitchen, does with bacon tadka problem or tadka. Uh, the problem I have is that I didn't have any bacon, so I'm using ghee. Now the spices I'm going to be adding are the here I have uh, cumin seed. And this is a uh, jira, um, so it's um, the Indian style cumin seed that are a bit smaller than the stuff you get uh, for European cooking. I also have fennel seeds, which are a bit less common in this uh, dish, but I love them. And they're a common flavor in Scandinavian cuisine. And then we have the small Indian style of mustard seeds called rai. And this one in the middle here that I'm gonna be adding with, these are curry leaves. Uh, and this is a devil's dung, also known as asafoetida or uh, hing. 
Now that stuff doesn't smell that great, but it tastes great once it is, uh, is cooked. So you hear it popping. Now it doesn't have to go very long. I'm gonna turn on the flame. Just have to fry for uh, a few minutes. <laughs> Those mustard seeds are popping out like popcorn. <clears throat> What you want is sort of a golden toasty brown. The trick is though to stop uh, cooking it bef because uh, before the uh, uh, the residual heat in the oil and the pan burn the spices. So this is something that's easy to do while you're waiting for your uh, <laughs> while you're waiting for your dokla panakea in the French style to cook. <clears throat> there we go, that's probably good. I'm just gonna turn off the heat. You see uh, fr the, there's a bit of um, smoke coming off of that. That means the spices are giving off their oils and I don't want all of them to disappear. And I have to turn on the fan now. It's been a few minutes since um, uh, since we cooked it. It's waited a bit longer. I was working on some other things. But uh, what I'll do now is uh, open the Instant Pot. So I'll turn it off here first and release the steam. So we'll turn it from sealing to venting. There's not very much left. While I wait, I'm just going to have some of my masala chai that I made here to go with my doklas. Ah. Now Danes, of course, would be probably drinking coffee with their pancakes and they'd be more of a sweet dish, but uh, the Gujarat, uh, Gujarati people would be having um, their dokla with a nice spiced chai. So here we are opening it. Wow, that looks great. All right, so um, how tough do I feel? Maybe I should get myself a cloth. out. Let's set that down for there for now, for now and I'll just move this to the side. Okay. Now, which one is the one that opens? Is it this one? Yeah. Oh, maybe not. Um, that goes that way. There we go. Ooh, wow. It's shrunk a bit, actually. That's kind of interesting. That's neat. And the texture looks good. And I'm gonna, while it's still warm, I'm gonna pour some of this spice mix on. Oh, that looks really good. And it smells toasty. I like my spices well toasted. All right, there we go. So, Now's the time for tasting. I'm looking forward to this interesting experiment. You can see it here. So it, it uh, has a nice texture. Let's see how it tastes though. Here we go. Mmm. Wow, that is fabulous. Whoa. It's got, it has a, a texture a bit like bao, like Chinese uh, steamed buns. Uh, and the, the, it doesn't taste actually very eggy. Um, I'm actually surprised. It has the taste of um, uh, chole batura, the, um, the, the, that, um, the, the, the chickpea dish with the fried, um, the fried bread, even though there's, it's just bready, but it has that chickpea taste and it has that nutty taste from the frying because of the tempered spices. It's got a little, it's not all, all soft because it has the pieces of ginger and, um, and pepper in it. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. It's just amazing to think that something that is like, looks almost like a bread like this has so much protein in it and there is a there is a mild taste of um of sourness i think maybe 
Next time if I get it, I might uh, try to use um, more skier or maybe use a, a yogurt that was thinner. That's generally what they use. That probably raise the sourness, but it would reduce the amount of protein and the fat, but this is really good. So, ah, geez. Okay, I'm not gonna sit here and eat. You need to make this. So do whatever version of it that uh, you would like. Obviously you can change the spices, but just you saw the techniques that I used here and uh, the Instant Pot. This type of thing you can order on uh, Amazon, I believe. So maybe I'll look it up. I'll put a link down below if I, if I find one of these. But I actually bought mine at a local uh, Indian, uh, uh, South Asian uh, grocery store. Uh, but not all of you may be in a large uh, metropolitan city uh, like I am. And um, so that's, uh, that's great. Um, if you can, it would be great if you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you got notifications. And uh, tell your friends about this channel. Um, if you think this is a crazy recipe um, and you like it, give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. If you, if you make any of my dishes from uh, Heathen Hearth, send me an email and a picture and I'm gonna put together a reel of all of the uh, recipes that people have done. I am gonna put up on the screen um, a, a playlist of uh, previous uh, recipes that I have done. And I'll also have um, a specific recipe that I think you might like. So if you would, check those out. And remember, you can always find me on social media. The links are all down below in the description. So until next time, keep on cooking.